girl Mo Clark in the building. I'm doing a special edition interview today. Post it up like a palm tree in the tropic Rozzy on the beat, make you wanna come and see Mo to the C, radio to TV You know she putting in work like she clocked in Celebrity guest, never guess who gon' drop in Television's best like a S on the chest Who's next? Say less, cause you rocking with, you rocking with the best Mocha, post it with the poster Stay until now you're ready, uh -huh. Hey guys, it's your girl Mo Clark in the building. I'm doing a special edition interview today, or oh, well, tonight. Super excited. We're actually at the Lux Mirage Boutique. So welcome. I hope you like it. I do. Um, I do. This is this is my showroom, if you will. You know, when the kids come, it's the play area. Apparently, <laughs> but it is what it is. So I'm in the building with Miss Shanice, and I'm super excited to have you, cause girl, I heard you out here doing it, <laughs> and you got so much stuff going on. So tell me a little bit about what you actually do. Okay, well a little bit about what I do. Again, my name is Shanice Wise and I am a business expansion coach and strategist. Okay. And so I work with business owners that are they surpassed like the six figure mark. Um, they're moving to seven figures or some of them have surpassed seven figures, but they're overworked, they're exhausted, and they're really trying to figure out how can I run this amazing business but still have time for my family still have time to live basically so mm -hmm. I teach business owners how to simplify their business but multiply their revenue at the same time because okay. a lot of times as business owners especially as women mm -hmm. and women of color we feel like we can't have it all mm. but we really really can we can it's all about putting the right systems and strategies in place mm -hmm. to get the right visibility, mm -hmm. you know, and to make sure you have the right help around you. Mm. And so I teach business owners that are at that level of expansion how to really optimize things, how to automate, how to hire, you know, and basically how to set it up where you have the right systems and strategies in place in order to grow. And so, yeah, that's that's a lot, right? You know, that's what I funny. do. <laughs> you know, because I'm listening at you speak, and it's kind of crazy because, you know, while I was in my dating phases or whatever, I would date guys that would tell me, you can't have it all. Mm. You can't have it all. You can't be married. You can't have the kids. You can't have the career. You can't have the business. And I'm like, why not? That doesn't make sense. And then a lot of other times, I would get fussed at from others, like, you need to just focus on one thing. Mm. But in my mind, it was like, well, I am the one thing. Mm. I am the brand, right? Mm -hmm. Because even though I have all of these different umbrellas that I have, if mm -hmm. you will, they all tie into me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I go on set and I act, I wear stuff from the boutique mm -hmm. or when I do this this is from the boutique you know what I mean so yeah. I just kind of feel like it all ties in together because we see other others do it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and they have a great revenue margin and they're doing the same thing they're getting a wholesaler and stamping a logo on it or whatever and they're not necessarily as hands-on yeah as yeah. I am yeah. you know I, I don't believe Kylie is testing out all these lip colors. Girl, you know? she's far beyond that, honey. You know, she done right. had a whole team to do She got that. a whole team. She got a whole building, right. you know, but I don't think she's in that building, you know, putting it, manufacturing it, putting it together. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when you think about you as your brand, think about a tree. 
Okay. okay. So a tree is rooted in the ground. Right. And then it grows and it has all these branches. Right. So you are the tree. And all of these branches that come out of you should generate revenue. Right. Right. And so like for me, like as that. a business coach, that's what I do. That's who I am. That's mm -hmm. my tree. But there's ways that I'm able to market myself, get myself out there. I'm an author. Okay, so that's one of my branches that gives me visibility. It generates revenue. I'm also a speaker. And so that's another way. Mm -hmm. I have courses. I have coaching programs. Mm -hmm. So all of it represents me as a business coach. Yes. But I'm able to use the different branches yes. to generate revenue, yes. to get more visibility, mm -hmm. and to really build my brand. And, and as business owners, that's really, really, really important. Um, but also as a business owner, Owner. Like one of the things that's going on now, there's a lot we're producing in the business area a lot of millionaires. Where you know, a long time ago, you was to hear million, and you would be like, Oh, but now there's more millionaires, there's more you know, women of color that are becoming mm -hmm. millionaires. But the thing about it is, we feel like we have to work, 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 right? And we lose the whole life of living, you know, Absolutely. we are given one life to live. Absolutely. And so we have to be able to enjoy business, mm -hmm. enjoy our life, make money, still be a mom, still have children, whatever your life is. And yeah. so that's really the important piece of it. Knowing how to run a business that generates beautiful revenue, but also be able to live and mm. to breathe and to enjoy life and travel and do the things that you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, because when you go to your grave, that's it. So you seem like you got your head on straight, <laughs> which most of the time we all appear to be that way. But then one day you might look up and we're all over the place. But what actually inspired you to get into this? Oh, so I this is I, I wrote about this in my book, Activating Your Gifts, and okay. it's um, 15 steps to identify your gift to prepare for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Now, what led me to writing it is because my father went to his grave mm -hmm. not really utilizing his gift, mm -hmm. and because of life, you know, taking care of me and my brother and being a husband and all that. And so what I see is there's a lot of uh, people that have beautiful gifts that the Lord has given them, mm -hmm. but they're not fully operating in them. Mm -hmm. And so that just kind of stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I see it so often in the business world. I mm -hmm. see business owners who are running crazy, amazing businesses, but they're not doing what they love to do. Right. They're not fully utilizing the gift that God has given them. So they're left empty. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like and I know it that everybody has been given a gift. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, it could be a thousand nurses in one room, mm -hmm. but everybody has their own unique gift. Absolutely. And so what led me to become like move in this space is because I want to be able to help as many women as I can operate inside of their gift, generate revenue, have it all, right? Mm -hmm. Live an amazing life and and really enjoy the journey. Absolutely. Because there's so many people who are not operating in their Absolutely. gift. There's so many people who are just doing this because it puts food on the table mm -hmm. and it puts a roof over our head. You can stay in corporate America to do that. You absolutely. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, and there's a time when you transition from being an entrepreneur to being a CEO of your business. Absolutely. And that's when the expansion takes place. But you have to have a different type of mindset. So anyways, what inspired me was my... I, I could go on you're and good, on about you're good. business. But what inspired me was just knowing that my father, whose life was you know cut short um, because of heart issues, did not fully walk in his gifting. Mm -hmm. You know, and... I just want to be known as that business coach who helped push people in the right direction and utilize the gift that the Lord has given. I love that. Because, you know, Oprah has this quote about um, something along the lines, you don't, you don't do what you do for the money. The money comes later. You mm -hmm. do what you do because you love it, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, even though I might not be a millionaire yet, 
I, I sit there and say, I am that same little girl that used to read off the cereal box and pretend that I'm in commercials because I've gotten to be on TV. Or, you know, I did pretend to interview people, and now here I am interviewing you, interviewing mm -hmm. other people. I play dress up. I always had an entrepreneur spirit, even mm -hmm. as a young girl. So to be able to, now I'm realizing, I feel like I'm walking in my purpose on mm -hmm. purpose. Like That's I'm good. doing it on purpose now. And it's not for to meet the celebrity or to do anything like that. It's because I genuinely love talking to people. I love hearing you guys' story. You know, how did you get here? What make you tick? What are some of the struggles that you had? Okay, what are some of the struggles that you had, like starting this journey? You know what? I, I got to go back to what you, what you were just saying about, you know, now walking in your purpose. Mm -hmm. And here's the biggest thing. A lot of us, so don't lose that thought because I'm going to answer your I question. You. But a lot of us will walk in our purpose and walk in our gifting and build businesses on unstable foundations mm -hmm. and unstable ground. Absolutely. And you have to make sure as a business owner that desires to be a CEO that you build your business the right way. Mm -hmm. Because you'll look to your left and to your right and you'll see business owners disappear. You'll see entrepreneurs who have built businesses and they don't last. A lot of people ask me, well, Shanice, how did you make it through COVID? Because I built my business on a solid foundation. And even though it may have, you know, hit, you know, the wind may have shifted it a little bit, it was able to stay. So I just want to say that to, you know, any business owner that's watching, Make sure that you are building it on a solid foundation. But, yeah, you know, so struggles, some of the struggles. I mean, in life we struggle, right? right? And so business is, is life. And I've gone through, oh, my gosh, I mean, I've been in, been in business for over 20 years. So I've had a lot of ups and downs. I would say one of the biggest things is um, I had to learn how to compartmentalize, mm -hmm. you know, because when your business is you mm -hmm. um, and you have life going on, mm -hmm. your life, you have to be careful that your life doesn't roll into your business. Absolutely. And so you have to know what door to open at what time. And so I went through a, um, a crazy divorce mm -hmm. and um, life was crazy. I mean, life was upside yeah. down. You know, I was um, just telling my friend, I just remember where I was one step away from being homeless, me and my son, you know, we went through, I went through a divorce, lost my home, like I could go on and on and on, and you know, nothing but the grace of God, but I was able to, because I knew business, I was able to kind of weather the storm, and yeah, and build my, my company back up, but as business owners, we're going to go through life. That's mm -hmm. just what happens. But it makes us strong. Mm -hmm. It builds our story. It builds our testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of women come to me because I, I work a lot with uh, women of color in business. And I one of the things that I know, because they'll say, well, Shanice, what's your it factor? What makes you different? Number one, you know, I've built my company. Yes, business tips and techniques, mm -hmm. but also uh, backed by spiritual and biblical principles. That's mm -hmm. who I am. I don't apologize for it. You know, and I feel like as a business owner, it's important to have that peace because when life happens and when struggles come, mm -hmm. it kind of keeps you, you know, rooted mm -hmm. and grounded. So, I don't know. I could talk about this for days. So, no, <laughs> I, but I understand because I always think, you know, when I was in the workforce, whatever you want to call it, I still am, but I spend a lot of time in customer service. Mm -hmm. So I think just like you, you know, applying your business ethics to going through what you were going through, I apply that customer service skill to my branding and to my business. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's one thing that, that sets me apart because there's a million and ten people got boutiques, right? Absolutely. Everybody got boutiques. Absolutely. And everybody doing drop shipping and all of that. And I really don't like doing that because I want to see the product before it goes out the mm -hmm. door. I want to touch and make sure I ain't no holes right, in it. Right. You know, I want to feel the texture because I don't want to provide something to somebody that I wouldn't even wear. Mm. Like, what does that say about me? Right. I, I don't, I don't want to send you something in this paper thin and now you're sending it back and now I got returns and Shopify taking money back and money back and money back. Like, I don't want to do that and a lot of people don't get that. So I always say I focus on customer service. I want to make sure I pack it with love and give you a little extra gift mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. So, with your book, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. Activating Your Gifts, do you have any tips or is it, is it, it could be all tips. 
could be all tips. Did you bring the book? Where's well, the book? You know what? No, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. But <laughs> let me say this to you. The, the book is about personal development. Okay. Um, because that's not, you know, I don't do that in my coaching. But I feel like that is something, you know, mental and personal development is important when it comes to running a business. Mm -hmm. And not just starting a business, growing a business. Because every level is a new level of faith. Absolutely. It's another level of, you know, like the mental work that we do. Because mm -hmm. we always have the good person on one side, the bad person. You know what I mean? You're, you have to constantly motivate. And so activating your gifts, it is really about knowing how to empower you, mm -hmm. okay? Realizing who you are, being able to self-motivate, mm -hmm. um, getting rid of all the things that's blocking you from getting where it is that you need to go to. Mm -hmm. And so it's a journey of self-development. Mm -hmm. So as you grow your business, you're strong in it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, I see it. I've been coaching business owners for a long time. When that personal life feeds into mm -hmm. the business, it, you gave me chills. So you know what? I was just I was just writing about there's this there's, there's such a difference between men running businesses yes. and women. Absolutely. So women, we bring in the emotion, we bring in all the extra, we bring in, you know, just everything that we bring in as women. Absolutely. Where men are matter of fact. Yeah. They can make a decision and they can go with it. Some of them. Oh, yeah, you're right. Some of them. Lord <laughs> but let's say majority. You yes. know what I mean? And that's why you see men move up, you know, a lot quicker. And so what I'm doing in this book is teaching women that. You know what I mean? Yes, we can have empathy. We can love, you know. But when it comes to business, we got to know how to run a business and not just say that we run in a business. Mm -hmm. Not make it look pretty on Instagram or whatever. We have to make sure that Absolutely. we are running a business. And so the personal development connects to the business, yeah. you know. And so activating your gifts, and you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on my website. On yeah, it's on Amazon, but you go to my website. It's uh, ShaniceMWise.com, ShaniceMWise.com. And it's on the website. You can order it from the website. And so it doesn't matter how long you've been in business. Mm -hmm. You could have been in business for 10 years or for one mm -hmm. or a new business owner. This book will give you a different mindset when it comes to building a business mm -hmm. that lasts. We're not in business to just run a fly-by-night business. Absolutely. We are in business to make it last. Mm -hmm. But also, you were talking about customer service. It's all about servanthood, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We are serving our clients. We are mm -hmm. serving our customers. And so when you take it off of you mm -hmm. and you put it on them, that's really what it's about. They're saying customer service has gone out the door. Mm. Well, it's so important that we focus on customer service, making our clients and customers feel like they should feel. Mm -hmm. We got to take care of our people. So it's all about servanthood. I was leaving a message for my clients today. And, you know, this, this week is Resurrection Week. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very important week. We came from Palm Sunday going to Easter Sunday. And I asked them the question, are you operating your business with love? Because yeah. that's what God is. God is love. Are you operating your business with love? Are you loving on your business? Are you loving on your clients? Are you loving on your customers? Are you praying over your business? Are you mm. praying over your clients? When is the last time that you really put them before yourself? You know, and so to go back to activating your gifts, it's really all about just developing you mm -hmm. so you can become a better CEO. Mm -hmm. You can become a better entrepreneur, a better business owner. Mm -hmm. And so www.ShaniceAndWise.com is where you can find it. So I love this question. This question, I would ask this anyway. Okay. But how does the entrepreneur or a business owner know when to hold and when to fold, basically? Like, do when should you give up on your business and try something else, or should you? Oh, gosh, that's such a good question. That's such a good question. I feel like when you have tried everything possible and it's still not working, mm -hmm. maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. If you have invested in yourself, you've gotten business coaching, mm -hmm. um, you've taken courses and classes, you have done everything consistently possible. Mm -hmm. You have been accountable to it and you're still not seeing the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not what you're supposed to be doing. Don't give up. Just try a different route. Okay. When I first started my coaching, it was under um, a different title. I was doing 
doing something a little different and it just didn't sit with me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to transition mm -hmm. and I had to shift a little bit into what I'm doing mm -hmm. at this moment. And so there may be shifting, you mm -hmm. know, you may not have to drop everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I would say for me, you know, I'm, it's spiritual. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would say first and foremost, simple God to make sure you know exactly mm -hmm. if it's, is it connected to your gift? You said your purpose. Is yes. it connected to your gift? Is it connected to your purpose? Like, you talk about, listen, when I walked in this boutique, you're excited. You love it. Like, I can see the the, oh, the, the you. shine, you know, the, the you know, it, it, I can see that this is what you love to do. Yeah. So, you're doing what you love to do. All of it. Oh, I, I can thing. tell. When Everything. you talk about it, you light up. That's how I feel about business coaching. Like, I wake up and I'm like, God, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of my client's life okay. where I can love on them and breathe belief into them and give them strategy. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of my clients, she just submitted a $60,000 proposal for one day. Mm -hmm. To go teach one. I'm like, finally, she listens to me. But to see that, the wins, that's what gives, you know, that's what makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're not seeing some type of result, mm -hmm. maybe it's time to reel it back in, go mm -hmm. to the drawing table, and figure out if it's something that you really truly want to do. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is about identifying what you want to do. Yes. And it may not be the first, second, or third thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I the story that I love is Tyler Perry's story. Um how he just literally tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and, tried. and mm -hmm. then one day boom it, it, it became what it is now. Yeah. And he's a billionaire. Mm. You know what I mean? Went from yes. living in his car to yes. now a billionaire. And so you just figured out, you try, you invest. Mm -hmm. A lot of business owners don't want to invest in themselves, mm. you know, and they want to be cheap. You want to make a million, but you want to invest $2. That yes. doesn't match. And so you got to, you have to do all those things before you give up. Right. So the biggest thing that everybody's been, and this wasn't even a planned question, it just happened when she's talking about investing. The biggest thing everybody's been up in eyes about for the past couple of days is getting meta verified on IG. People don't want to invest the $14 or this, that, and the third and the other. Now, I'm, I did it. I'm not going to lie, you know, because I feel like I'm out here, I'm interviewing with you guys, celebrities, whoever, I'm putting all this work into my media and all the things mo, all things surrounding mo. I watch a lot of catfish, okay? I'm not going to lie. I see people getting catfished by the celebrities all the time and For it sure. don't really be the celebrities, right, you know? Right, right. So my thing is, okay, well, if, if IG say, you know, I'm going to give them a chance because they said this is going to protect your account. But what people don't realize is, I dabble in PR as well. People been paying for that. She said, I don't know if people really know. They just pay more than the fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, you know? I mean, you do what makes you feel good. You right. know what I mean? Like, if paying for on Twitter, if that's going to give you the visibility that you need, then do it. Yeah. And then if it don't work, stop it. It's simple. It was that simple to me. I mean, it, it really is that simple. I mean, that's on any platform, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, yes. on Twitter, on TikTok. Facebook. It, Facebook. I yeah. mean, how many of us pay for ads on Facebook? We should be. You know what I mean? <laughs> and be. so if Twitter is offering this, I think a lot of times because the whole Elon Musk thing and, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to help grow your business, yes. $14. Why not try it? You Why try not try else. it? I mean, you try everything else. Why not try it? So I compare. I actually, I look at this thing that I'm about to tell you now in a relationship standpoint, marriage standpoint, and business standpoint. Okay. I think a lot of times, sometimes our downfall, whether it's relationship, business, whatever, is comparing ourselves to where mm. others are at. Girl. Now, how do you feel about that? Because I believe that. I've seen girls... I'll tell you with the marketing. At, you know, but mm -hmm. it's the marketing strategy that people use, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you don't even have to say marketing. If you just go old school and go back to so, uh, social studies class, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And if you create the image that there's a demand, people are going to want to shop with you or deal with you because they're like, oh, she popular. Right. Let me go get that dress. She said she got one left and you right. can have 85. Right. But you're right. telling them you got right. one right. left. Right. It's a yeah. marketing show. It, it is. It is. So do you feel like one of the biggest downfalls in business is comparing to what others are doing? Absolutely. Because you compare your weakness to somebody else's strength. Mm -hmm. And so 
it whenever you compare it's always going to be a downfall mm -hmm. i had to tell one of my clients who's an event planner mm -hmm. stop following all event planners mm. just stop because every time i talk to you you're comparing yourself to someone else Y'all are gifted differently. Right. You have different businesses. You're located in different places. Right. Your voice is different. Your content is different. And so every time you compare yourself, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. For me, what I have done is I'm like, okay, Shanice, you know your it factor is a little different. Mm -hmm. And so this business coach may be doing very well, but her it factor is different. Absolutely. What she brings to the table is different. So Absolutely. for me, it's a lot easier for me to say, good job, girl. Yes. But this is who I am. Yes. This is what I do. Yes. If you want to run an amazing business but also get prayed over, mm -hmm. I may give you a prophetic word. Yes. I may have to even stop and, and go in for your family. Yes. If you can handle that, then come on over here. If you can't, there's a million other business owners and business coaches. coaches yeah. I'll go connect you with them. Yeah. And so I think it is being confident in who you be. And yeah. that's what I talk about in my book. And so... That's another part of the whole personal development. Mm -hmm. But if you're taking notes, if you compare yourself to someone else, you're comparing your weakness mm -hmm. to their strength and you will always lose. There's always going to be competition. Absolutely. And it's always going to be someone else that does what you do. Absolutely. Just make what you do amazing and keep stay focused, look ahead and straight up. What's on the sides of you, don't. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because a lot of times... What we see is not always Hello. what it is. You, you know what I mean? That. And I know that because I've had clients who have a million followers mm. and they making no money. Mm. And that's that's factual data. I've had clients on Instagram that have a whole bunch of uh, clients, but their business is in shambles. Mm -hmm. I've had million dollar business owners come to me and their systems and their strategies are a mess. Mm -hmm. You cannot always focus on what you I'm see. I'm trying to tell you. It's about what's behind closed doors. Yes. Then I have clients who are running million dollar, half million, even $200,000 businesses and have maybe 2,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. You cannot compare to you that. You cannot. I say it all the time. We see... You know, I like the fact that you said that the it factor, because there's a million and ten people doing media. It's not like it was back in the day. You no. don't have to get discovered. You know, you can start your own channel and back yourself at this point. Yeah. But I feel like they don't have the it factor because I've been around some of these people when they'll get on camera, the camera comes on and they light up they and they're like, hey! And then the camera goes off and they be like, girl, give me away from this person. You know, and it's like, oh my God, your whole everything was just fake. Everything yeah. about you was fake. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. So tell I wrote about story. this in this article that I just uh, wrote about. So when I first got in the coaching game, I have been coaching business owners for a long time in mm -hmm. a different business. So when I got into the coaching game, I'm like, okay, I know what I know, but I probably need help. So I reached out to, well, I had a referral from um, a girlfriend of mine. She's like, try this business coach. She's amazing. Girl, I go to her retreat. And I was, I could not believe all the mess that I was hearing. <laughs> I got up and went in the bathroom and I cried for an hour. And so I cried because that business coach should have been in my program. Mm -hmm. She was giving out false information. Mm -hmm. People were in there spending all this money mm -hmm. with her and they were not going to get what it is that they were signing mm -hmm. up for. Mm -hmm. And that day, God spoke to me like, you don't need the validation you are all I've already given you this you already know how to you can see what business owners can't see mm -hmm. just because you're new to this arena don't mean you don't have mm -hmm. it and everybody is not what they say that they I'm are trying to tell you. and that was the moment that was so clear to me that's why I say comparison it's the root of evil mm -hmm. because you compare yourself to what you see mm -hmm. and not what's factual mm -hmm. and from that day on I was like oh no oh no oh no I tell my clients before clients sign up for my coaching program I say go study me go research me go look me up absolutely look I'll send you over some Google me. Google me. I'll send you over testimonials. <laughs> you can talk to some of my clients. Yes. Because when we get together, we become married. 
Because my program is a 12-month program. Yes. I don't do nothing less than that because I need to be able to transform all of you. Yes. I need to look at, I need to be able to do business analysis. Mm -hmm. I need to look at your SWOT and now I need to look at everything in order for you to grow and for me to help you. And I'm like, you got to research me because too many people mm -hmm. invest too quick mm -hmm. or they sign up too quick and they mm -hmm. don't do the necessary work. They don't. And so that's why we see all these false folks yes. running out here saying, I can show you how to make a million dollars in a day. No, mm. you can't. I can repair your credit. I can repair your relationship. Credit, guru. I can save your marriage yes. in 24 hours. Yes. And I'm like, no, yes. no. I'm here for the Google me. And then, you know what happens? Then the industry gets a bad rap. Yes. Oh, business coaches get a bad rap. Or people who own boutiques get a bad rap yes. because of the false people yes. who are falsifying information and I'll never forget that time when I went and I stood in that bathroom and I boohoo cried and it wasn't because I was sad it was because I already knew what I knew